Um, yeah, like she just wants to have a moment to pause in a fun shape over here. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, and I shall, and I shall pass you and it yeah. shall be more dynamic. <laughs> I'm sorry. We haven't done this in a month. <laughs> I enjoy framing through things because I'm a dork. Yeah, it's been a while. Mm-hmm. Um, Hello, and welcome to another Zadie episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We are here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you are wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in both partnering in solo dancing. She has about 22 years. I have about 24. And tonight, my neighbor is dropping very loud things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we're looking at uh, Hugo Miguez and Kalis Key from Swing Fling 2016. Uh, we're talking about unique connection styles, particularly ones that kind of happen spur of the moment, just based on how you happen to be interacting with one another on the dance floor. Uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, we have a $5 tier for those of you who just love these free shows that we do. And we also have a $35 tier if you want to dive even deeper into the nerdiness with us. Because, oh, we get nerdy. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to drop the link to tonight's video in the chat. Go ahead and give it a watch. And when you're done, we will get to analyzing. Uh, we are only looking at the first song. Yes, only the first song. And I should add in just for the recording that this is of your requested video that we're looking at tonight. Uh, is there any kind of like preamble you want to do before we? Um, uh, I don't think so. Um, I mean, we're just looking at some different connections. Um, we want to really highlight the best parts of this dance. Um, and I think I, I will also probably point out some... Um, different musicality things that she does because she is somebody that is really good at like really small um, musicality pieces so I will probably point some of that out at some point other than that um, I don't have anything else to say (laughs) cool to the screen share do you want to go first with this one or shall I yeah I can all right so uh, we picked out a couple timestamps to look at for tonight. So this first one um, is really what Khalees is doing. And it's interesting because um, it's actually really clear to see what uh, their hands are doing in the connection. So she's doing some styling and she actually very clearly um, moves her hand uh, back and forth in his hand to kind of go from some stretch to compression. like as she's doing this little styling here. Um, And then after she's done with that, we have a moment where Hugo kind of goes to lead her forward and she almost disconnects. So you could see that hand right there move back and forth. Yeah. And so here she's really just letting that arm go. She's not necessarily like totally disconnecting from him, um, but more disconnecting her body from her arm. (laughs) (laughs) If that makes sense. She's just kind of relaxing the arm and letting it move without uh, connecting that to the rest of her body on her back. I want to highlight how um, going into this, Hugo finishes the arc of the handhold by bringing it really close to his left hip, which is a really nice way of setting yourself up with a lot of rope to reel out to adjust to a follow who is contributing a lot to the dance um, or a follow who you just know likes to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. If he was already fully extended at this point and Khalees were to go there, he would have to actually take a step to compensate for that but because he has the hand close to his hip there's room for it to move away right through this point without him having to travel very far and he can worry more about paying attention to her and shaping and reacting to it Mm -hmm. so yes there's a lot of connection in the handhold right here but he's really using his eyes to pay attention to what she's doing 
So Khalees is doing some pretty um, like micro styling moments here um, with that chest pop. She's hitting something that is not just, you know, like a huge part of the music. It's a very small piece. But what she's doing is you can see as she comes out of, is it a turn that they're going into this with? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as she's coming out of it, she over rotates so that her back is almost to him. And for follows, that is one of the best ways to get your lead to pay attention to you so you can do something. Because mm -hmm. you're essentially like breaking your frame mm -hmm. right here. And any leader who cares about a follows shoulder <laughs> will not apply force to mm -hmm. your arm in this position. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the other ways to really communicate that you're playing around with something is to really uh, increase or decrease the tension in the connection. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes it's hard to get that nuance um, with certain people that you're dancing with. So the easiest way to go about being like, hey, I want to do something is to rotate away. Mm -hmm. I want to highlight how uh, Khalees is prepping for this initial chest pop. It's mm -hmm. actually something I was thinking we could do an entire episode on. Um, mm -hmm. Prepping for impact can be the cheesy, cheesy, glorious <laughs> title for it. Um, but she's actually collapsing her chest a little bit beforehand. Yeah. So that way the pop has more, more impact to it. To it. <laughs> yeah. Why did the... <laughs> Why I had another bookmark. Oh, I must have murdered it somehow. Anyways, so from here to here. Whereas if you were to be going from just flat, it's not quite as powerful as if going from here to there. Mm -hmm. So that little prep of collapsing her chest first makes the pop so much more impactful. Yeah, and she's also, like, continuing that line of that, like, negative um, energy before she goes into that pop. She brings that leg. It's, like, bent underneath her. So it has that, you know, extra curve to it. And then as she pops her chest out, she extends that leg. And so both of those things really help uh, enhance both sides of that. Mm-hmm. And then I want to talk a little bit about the way Hugo handles trying to initiate the next pattern, <laughs> but um, Khalees is holding back and wanting to extend the pattern even more instead of moving on to the next one. And the way they communicate through that moment is actually really phenomenal because you can see through this as, as Hugo really starts planting on this right foot to push off of it and then to push back onto his right foot and travel, you can tell he has intention to move mm -hmm. for them to start doing some form of a pass probably, especially considering how much his center is moving through space through this weight transfer. And the way Khalees is responding is yes, she is shifting down the slot with him. Like they're actually moving together at the like same rate. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, but she doesn't want to go into another pass right away. She wants to hold on. So she's still in this kind of overextended like rotationally frame. She hasn't faced him. And because of that, he doesn't want to apply force to the system because that would put strain on her shoulder, right? So as he realizes it's not yet safe to pull on her shoulder, he starts extending his left arm. So the hand doesn't actually go anywhere, but it doesn't interrupt his own flight. He doesn't awkwardly just stop traveling because he doesn't mm -hmm. want to pull on her. He keeps traveling but he extends his own rope to allow her to stay there and he stays forward and counterbalances himself with his right leg in order to continue to let her stay there mm 
And I think, correct me uh, if this isn't what you see, uh, Alicia, but what that flick that Khalees does is applying more tension to the system. So Hugo actually has more tension now in order to initiate this part of the pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that back foot is up. So there's not anything to uh, hold a large chunk of her weight, basically. Yeah, and she has rotated just enough that her right arm is now more in front of her shoulder instead of beside or behind. Mm -hmm. So it's safer for her to be pulling in that connection with her body weight. Basically what she's doing is as she's rotating into her arm here, she's letting it connect to her back, which allows her to move as one piece again. Just so good. Like, I, I love it when you can see that very, like, 50-50 communication mm-hmm. going. It's like, I offer this. And it's like, yeah, I like that, but let's adjust it a little bit, yep. and vice versa. And it, it happens so fast. And if you don't know what actually to look out for, you'll miss things like that. Mm-hmm. Is there anything more in this one you want to talk about? or shall we I don't on? think so. I think we cool. can move to the next one onward so this is another moment where I read it as Hugo wanted to move a little bit faster um, and Khalees didn't necessarily want to so Mm -hmm. if we watch uh, Hugo's hands they accelerate right through here to go up. And usually that kind of acceleration that goes straight up will kind of pendulum the follow underneath it to the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, But rightly so, like Khalees just dragged her, was dragged across the floor for a not small distance. (laughs) She, She wanted to slow down. But it also could have been a musical choice. I'm just making a joke. And you can even see she does have a little bit of that pendulum. Mm -hmm. But she's keeping it really tight underneath herself. So if we watch her feet from here to here. And she's reeling out her arm to dissipate the rest of the energy. So instead of ending up over here, she's ending up where she is because her arm went up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she does very frequently, and it's something that I do as well, where you keep your arm mildly connected to the rest of your body, but you let it move separately, and then you connect the rest of yourself when you're ready. Yeah, it's a really great tool, not only to protect yourself, um, Mm -hmm. but also musically, if you want to make a slightly different choice, Um, it's a great tool. That is definitely generally when I use it is to uh, stay with some good musicality. Mm -hmm. And I love how Hugo then realizes, okay, we're going slow. So Mm -hmm. he doesn't then try to lead with that same hand again. He's like, okay, I'll do a face loop. And, And he works with what he's given in such a, like, he's so on top of it. It's very much, um, Reminds me of Kyle. Mm -hmm. Um, It also kind of reminds me of uh, Christy Mond. Yeah. Because I think they have very similar um, movement where they just kind of keep things going. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But being able to like react and play with the follows ideas is such a useful skill as a leader Um, because just through basic numbers we have more follows in this dance than we have leaders right Mm -hmm. and there's a higher likelihood (laughs) that there's going to be a larger number of more advanced follows that you dance with so having the skill to let your follow bring you up by letting them do their thing and using it is 
is amazing. Yes. It's one of my favorite parts of leading because it, it allows me to lead things I never would have thought of that are outside of my repertoire because I'm staying present and I'm reacting to what is happening as opposed to what my preconceived idea of what mm-hmm. should have happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised her earrings didn't fall off right there because like she snapped there's a head. lot of movement with them there's a lot of movement um shall we move on to the next one yeah I think so cool uh, and I think we forgot to say if at any point during these live episodes those of you who are with us live if you have questions feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself So we wanted to talk about this uh, rib connection where mm-hmm. Khalees has her hands on Hugo's ribs. And I believe it's it's both of them, right? No, her left um, hand's on his hip. Yeah. Okay. It's always so fun when they're both wearing black, the people behind <laughs> them are wearing black, and Just the backdrop is mostly black. You're like, is that an arm? Is that a different person? <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> So first of all, what Hugo is doing is he's actually placing her hand on the front corner of his ribcage instead of just letting go and hoping she will find that connection. Mm -hmm. He's actually placing her hand where he would like her to connect with him. And then I believe it was Khalees' choice to also connect with his hip. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, that's something that a lot of really great follows do is because she is moving to a point where she's behind him, she is adding extra connection points so that he knows where she's at. Mm-hmm. I love how he notices, oh, your left hand is on my hip. Yeah. <laughs> I will not chudo chop you because, you know, he was just going to swing his left arm down and through and duck under her right arm. That's what he was prepping to do. But he's like, oh, there's a forearm here. I shall not slice it in half. I will slow down. So this is another instance of Hugo having an idea that's a little bit faster and Khalees making a choice that just slows it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um. And I just love how fast Hugo is just on top of it to react yeah, and to change up what he's doing. And he waited just long enough to go under without murdering her, which I Mm -hmm. highly appreciate. Please do not murder your follows on the dance floor. I will find you. I think I'm told I'm scary of us threatening. To not hurt your partner. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I'm okay Uh, with this. Um, uh, I was going to add. So what you see Hugo do, because he, you know, is planning on going underneath her arm or doing whatever he's swooping around. But what he does is he makes sure that the upper body goes below that point that she has uh, that left hand on his hip. Yeah, she barely lifts it at all to accommodate for him. I don't think she lifts it at all. I think it just flies over him. Yeah, Yeah, she's rotating her arm as opposed Mm -hmm. to lifting it. Police's pose makes me want to go stretch my hamstrings. <laughs> Yesterday was leg day and my hamstrings are mad at me. There will be stretching later. And then I, I love how she just chooses to kind of leave her hands at the same relative positions on his back. So as, mm-hmm. as he finishes rotating, it ends up crossing her arms. 
and, and just makes this moment more dynamic. So instead of like rushing to get out of it, again, she's slowing things down yeah. to make them more dynamic, which as a follow who has an invisible disability where going, going, going is not feasible um, because of my, for lack of a better word, heart issues. Um, I love seeing techniques where slowing things down is that is wonderful musically because um yeah I'm gonna steal them all essentially <laughs> is what I'm saying and especially for this particular song there's no need to rush through things mm -hmm. it's a very slow soft song yeah and then she maintains those crossed arms for like a prolonged period of time mm -hmm. and it creates a really dynamic transition mm -hmm. between those two patterns yeah she stays in that exact same position and I think that's a really important thing to know because a lot of times what you see at higher levels with dancers that feel the need to do all the things to be musical and whatnot is so let's say Khalees is, you know, not Khalees. She would already be moving while Hugo mm -hmm. is still going under her arms. And that's A, dangerous. And B, yeah. it just, it, it kind of makes things muddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's another moment where, like, a lot of interesting things are going on. <laughs> I'll, I'll show it in full before we break it down into pieces. <laughs> oh, that neck release hurts my neck. <laughs> I know, right? Same. Man, if, if I were suddenly offered a bionic joint, I would have a hard time picking which one. Because there are so many I want bionic. Neck, shoulders, knees. Yeah. Not toes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Throwback to some old nerdy West Coast swing jokes. Yep. <laughs> so the first thing we have is uh, Khalees once again, like breaking her frame and putting her right arm behind her, which is helping tell Hugo that like, she's got an idea. Don't mm -hmm. pull her out of it. Um, and he is offering just enough tension to, to support, to counterbalance her, I should yeah. say, um, but without pulling too much on that compromised shoulder. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually Khalees who initiates <laughs> <laughs> the trust fall. You can tell he goes like, what, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? What are we Oh, that's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And he extends his left arm way back and he just throws his left arm forward and he offers his whole forearm. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to apply pressure not only to the side of her ribs, but to her back. And considering the angle they're at, because you, you can tell that his feet are in line with her right foot. Yep. So they don't actually have any lateral stability here. Yeah. And what that means is Hugo is in a really tough position to actually support her back. So he ends up supporting her shoulder joint through this weight supported move, mm -hmm. which is, this is, this is a thing probably people have opinions about. My opinion uh, <laughs> is that I, I would rather support the rib cage and not the shoulder joint just because, you know, ribs are stronger than shoulders and mm -hmm. yada, yada. But um, Khalees is one of the strongest human beings in West Coast Swing. So if you can do it with anybody, it, it's fine with her. <laughs> I will <laughs> say that. But yeah, you can see how it's really her shoulder joint that he's supporting. Mm -hmm. But he was ready for her to shape into it in kind of any way based on how his forearm is set. Yeah. I think he was expecting her to lay out more um, mm -hmm. because of the way that he prepped for it. He's like bracing for a lot of yeah. energy. <laughs> yep. And that is something that I wanted to point out with Khalees. So 
if we see like at the very beginning of this here when she's leaning away from him i would compare it to like uh like a weight at the end of a string because it's like her body is active enough to kind of hold her in that place but it's not really connected through the back and the arm at all mm -hmm. um but so because of this, I think he was expecting her to just go straight back, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I think uh, I think a lot of fellows would probably do something that's more laid out from this position. But I think she realizes how far he is like away from her that he is. And mm -hmm. it's just uh, it's like a blind trust fall, basically. <laughs> yeah, she figured um, out, realized that he was aligned with her right foot and so she ends up falling at an angle and that's how mm. that's how this happens yeah she falls in an angle and she lets her feet move to underneath her so she has most of her weight hugo's uh supporting what i would say is like the momentum and redirection of it mm -hmm. I wouldn't say he's supporting the majority of her weight because you see that right foot is really close to underneath her as she's bending and sitting down into this. Yep. And another thing you can notice is how much tension is in Hugo's right arm as well. So um, she's engaging her whole right arm enough, like you can see the flex, <laughs> <laughs> that it, it's not simply under her shoulder joint. It's also her hand. Mm -hmm. And what that did was like effectively like move the weight from this side of the line to more balanced across the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Hugo is flexing his entire body right about here. Oh, yes. I am too. I know this turns out fine, but every time I go through it, I, I start clenching everything. <laughs> Particularly my left knee screams at me because like yeah. compressing into turnout and then rotating like right there, his yeah. knee is turned in more than his foot. Yeah. And that's, ow. Yeah. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Hope you're okay, Hugo. Um. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the way that she goes into that really softens the amount of momentum that there is. Because if she were to just like go straight back from this position she's in right here, there's a really far distance for her to travel with that upper body. Mm -hmm. So rather than doing that, she allows the lower body to go to the floor first. And there's a lot less momentum from where her hips start to where they end. Mm -hmm. And I love how Hugo is just like, yes, save the day. And yeah. lines. <laughs> Gorgeous lines. Got to make sure you get those nice lines in there. Got to get that. Is it lambda? Is that? <laughs> Anyways. There's your Half-Life Easter egg for the day, fellow gamers. All right, shall we move on to the next? Yes. Cool. Oh, so fun. Do you want to take this one first or shall I? Um, yeah, I can talk first. Um, so I think... There's kind of two things to look at here. And the first is the connection that she has uh, with that free left hand onto his elbow area. And that kind of allows her to shape a little bit differently and communicate something different to Hugo. Because you can see she's not intending on just like a regular like passing tuck or anything like that. She's going the other way <laughs> mm -hmm. once she gets around the corner here. The thing I'm trying to determine is if she's actually inviting him to pass her or if that's his idea. It looks to me like his idea. Um, yeah, like she just wants 
to have a moment to pause in a fun shape over here. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, and I shall, and I shall pass you and it yeah. shall be more dynamic. <laughs> I'm sorry. We haven't done this in a month. <laughs> I enjoy framing through things because I'm a dork. Yeah, it's been a while. Mm. Um, so then the second piece to look at uh, for this particular movement is that ending position that she gets in where she crosses that. I think it's the front leg that gets crossed. Mm. Um So she gets into this position here and she waits because she can see that Hugo is moving around her and then he has that connection on her rib and he's still rotating around her. So that really allows this really fast spin out of that like uh, totally stopped position. It allows it to happen a lot easier. Mm hmm. Now, this is another one of those just excellent examples of Khalees modifying what they're doing ever so slightly. And then mm-hmm. he goes like, ooh, that's a great idea. Now I'll do this. And he basically escalates the complexity and the dynamics of the situation. Mm-hmm. And Khalees provides him the opportunity to follow through on whatever idea he had. Because as soon as... Khalees notices Hugo's traveling like right through here and she places her right foot in front like Alicia was talking about. She knows that Hugo is traveling past her which implies that he has a larger idea and because he is behind her it makes sense to default to his idea when there's that much momentum involved. And, and the way he connects into her uh, ribs is just expertly done because mm-hmm. he creates an excellent center counterpoint situation. I would say the center counterpoint. Uh, is more of his. It's almost like in between his elbow and shoulder. Mm hmm. Because he's extending his arm and he's traveling. So long story short, he is making his arm uh, like a stretched rubber band. Yeah. In order to redirect Khalees. And he is not asking her to travel. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and he has a really good hold on her ribs. So it's like his hand is kind of cupped around them. Um, not just like holding onto the side of them necessarily. Mm -hmm. And he's initiating that turn. A, he has to, he's moving behind her. So he's already initiating some of that rotational momentum. And then he, he's using the like front of that hand to kind of start initiating And it helps with the follow through. Yep. To uh, accelerate that turn. Yeah. And I want to highlight um, the way he brings Khalees's arm down to release it, to accelerate her a little bit more. It's not literally straight down. Yeah. It, it's, it's, a, uh, it's at an angle in two dimensions, but it's a uh, spiral from bird's eye view. <laughs> 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 so it's not this it's this plus this there there's your scary drawing of the week <laughs> put your jokes in the comments below <laughs> and here's another uh, instance of Khalees doing a lovely prep before the dip. Mm -hmm. So instead of being completely vertical here, she's intended forward in an arc, which makes 
this shape all the more powerful. So if mm -hmm. I put a frame here and we go between the two, there is more contrast between these two than mm -hmm. if she were to be starting from this position. Yeah, um, there's kind of a, like a breath in the music uh, as she comes up and forward. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good way to um, uh, acknowledge like a breath in the music is to go up um, and forward as well um, before the next part comes in because it's going to be a deeper, like heavier drop to um, that breath. Mm -hmm. And I love how they hit like the strike of the next hit, like right here. Mm -hmm. And then they just keep melting into it. Yeah. And um, side note, this is another opinion thing, but these kind of dips where they're shaped the way they are towards each other with their upper bodies and her arm is around her ne his neck. I love dips like that. And I wish we saw them more because they're just so dynamic and intimate and, and they don't have to be sexual. <laughs> Like it, it's just, uh, it's a great variation on a dip. Uh, uh, more please. There. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Oh, and uh, Hugo is also helping. He's looking this way with her mm -hmm. and then snaps his head to look at her. Contrast is king. Yeah. So, and what they're doing is they're creating an acceleration right at the beginning of that next uh, beat or when kind of that music comes back in after that breath. And then they're just allowing it to slow down. All right. So this little uh, kick that Khalees does, that adds some acceleration in. And it makes it more dramatic and it makes it match the music really well. Hugo does a brilliant job of not affecting her hand while still holding on to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he folds into himself and turns. So as soon as the hand has finished coming down from her rotation, it stays at the same height relative to the floor. It travels just a little bit with her because the whole partnership is traveling down the slot ever so slightly. But he then does not affect her hand at all besides changing the way their fingers are rotated in each other's hands. And then what she does is maintain contact. And you can see how he's basically rolling his front across her forearm. And he never actually moved his left hand. He's just flexing his wrist mm -hmm. to reach for hers. So there's this really seamless transition um, in multiple different types of connection through this one moment. I can't tell you how many times I have been following this pattern and a leader has just gone, yank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a problem. Anyways. All right, do we want to talk about this one or shall we go to the funny earring flying thing to round up the night? We can talk about this one for a minute. All right. Once again, I am clenching. <laughs> <laughs> one might say I'm quivering in fear from my spine. So... This is an interesting, um, I'm not sure what I want to call it. <laughs> yeah, this is like the one moment in this dance where they were not on the same page, essentially. Yeah. 
because I think she was ready to do another uh, partially weight supported move. Mm -hmm. Whereas he was wanting to do more of a uh, centripetal force kind of telemark situation Mm -hmm. in shadow position. And uh, it results in whiplash. (laughs) So... (laughs) He has an arm wrapped around her waist, and because he's wanting to have that uh, rotational momentum, you can see that her hips come forward first, and then her head and her feet follow. And it's not necessarily anything that's like really aggressive. It looks that way um, at speed, but because of the way that they're kind of like rotating into it, like her torso is just kind of slowly moving forward. Like there's not a really jerky movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the main reason why it looks as extreme as it does is because for like a frame, her head disappears from frame. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's. So from a different angle, this would probably still look a bit intense, but not as intense as it does from this angle, where it literally looks like her head's getting whipped away from her body. Yeah. And one thing to note is that she also has her arm wrapped around his neck. So that's a very secure position that they're in, technically. (laughs) Which is basically why she just kind of allows herself to be thrown around. Like, that's Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's basically what she does. She doesn't try to take over um, and, like, get herself back under control. Mm -hmm. Because she's already moving here. So if she really does anything, it's going to end terribly. (laughs) Yeah. And she just kind of lets him put her back on her feet because he was the one that started moving her originally anyways. And safe. All right. And then to round out the night, since we're not like actually analyzing the second song, we just wanted to slow-mo through the moment where she loses both earrings because we thought that would just be entertaining. So here we go. They go off in very different directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and both of them, like one after the other. ba bum. All right. All right. Wait for it. There's one. One has already left the ear. Oh, I bet it was like her her thumb probably went through it. This is this is why I can't wear large hoop earrings when I dance either, because I have attached earlobes and that makes the earrings like flare out. So if I ever run my fingers through my hair, my thumb goes through the hoops. <laughs> it's a very specific problem. It I is. hate it. <laughs> Sorry, we're late. That's all. We've already got one right here. It flies. And now this one is lost. It flies. You just go in totally separate directions. Bam. <laughs> one goes down to the front, the other goes up to the back. Yeah, unidentified flying earrings. I'm aware of how horribly awful that joke was. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways. Right. Are there any questions, comments, concerns, or additional bad jokes you would like to share with us before we call it a night? I'm going to have a sip of water while we pretend there's Jeopardy music playing. That's literally what I hear in my head every single time we wait for people. (laughs) It's so much easier with you because I'm like, hey, we can talk to each other. If people are like composing their thoughts, it's fine. But when I'm doing my life coaching business, I don't have like the coaching partner so it's just crickets and yeah. because i'm a dork i fill that space with inane content that doesn't surprise me <laughs> yeah. i am a really good coach but i'm also a comedian so if you like that combo please go to accountabilitymuse.com anyway. so much self-promo tonight <laughs>
<laughs> can't help myself uh yeah if you um if you enjoyed this please subscribe youtube nerdy west go swing and uh if you want to throw money in our faces because you like this that much go to patreon.com slash nerdy to lcs <laughs> oh cool always love introducing people to dances they haven't seen before thanks mm-hmm. again for joining us roger yeah Alrighty. Well, okay. if there are no questions, we are going to wrap it up for tonight. So yeah. it's a nice short episode. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us. And this recording will be up on our YouTube channel this Sunday at noon Pacific. If you want to revisit it and see how yep. I edited the outtakes. <laughs> there is plenty. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you like my segue? I just... <laughs> I'm doing the cheesy YouTuber shit. You just gotta, just gotta practice. Oh no, you froze. Are you there? Hello? Kate or Roger, can you hear me? Or do I need to leave and come back? Okay, cool. Thank you. (laughs) It's always hard to tell which one of us is frozen. Right? Several bad puns later. I don't know. Should we do the whole shebang again in case it's not there? We can. (laughs) Okay, cool. Sorry, people. This will be real fast. All right. (laughs) Hello, and welcome to another zany episode of Dirty West Go Swing, the podcast with Pixers. Pixers? I tried to go fast, and it ended poorly. Oh, no, you're frozen again. Kate, is Alicia the one that's frozen? (laughs) Or is it me this time? (laughs) Okay, cool. Are you there? Yeah. Hi. Outtakes are going to be banging this week. (laughs) (laughs) My internet keeps turning off. um, Excellent. For no particular reason. Really good night for that. Yep. (laughs) Okay, all right. Sorry, everyone joining us live. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Third time's the charm. Mine is done. Mine's almost done. It had a small buffering hiccup there for a second. Oh. It's a good Technology night for internet. Great. <laughs> good night. Mm, to the screen share. Uh, what's, what's Robert Rooston going to say the first time I do that and he witnesses it? That's, that's, <laughs> that's terrifying to think about. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can you sense movement in the force? Yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I think that that's something very important to note. I no longer see your screen. Yeah, okay, sorry. Nice. Um, <laughs> one of my coaching clients blurped me in, in our private Discord, and I'm like, I should turn off those notifications. <laughs> and for some reason, it turns off the screen sharing when I go to a different program. Oh, that's interesting. Because that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, anyways, 